Okay, um, got it that this thing starts off as a spiritual journey. And within that mm -hmm. spiritual journey, you start to have some awakenings. Um, mm -hmm. Did you ever buy into one man, one woman? Were you ever in a monogamous mm -hmm. relationship before this spiritual journey? Yes. Yeah, so um, I was one of those kids growing up where um, I just would date and I would tell I would tell girls, I don't even want a girlfriend. You know, I want to just date. Um, so I, I think I kind of had it in me earlier, but I didn't know how to handle it. But I love monogamy. I love love. Um, so by the time I was in my teens, I fell in love with a young lady and I was totally monogamous. I was totally faithful. Um, I always tell people that in order to do polygyny correct, you have to be great at monogamy because it's like this is like monogamy multiplied. So I took the same skills that I had learned how to love that one woman. And I and I told myself I got to go harder if I'm going to love more than one. And so. Yeah, I support monogamy. I, that's what I did first. I fell in love, and that really helped my spiritual growth, too. Because when I settled down and was in a monogamous relationship, um, that was the strongest thing that helped me, too, on my journey as well. Spiritual growth and love and having that support. And, um, yeah, so after that, I told myself, um, after that particular relationship, I told myself, I'm going to do a polygynous lifestyle, and I'm going to let everybody know, like every woman I date know if she's open to this because yeah that became my 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 calling in a sense okay so you're in a monogamous relationship you clearly have love and affection for this woman did you try mm -hmm. to explain the journey that you were on and see if she was open to going on this journey with you or did you guys break up and you started anew like okay the next relationship i go into yeah i'm gonna Go in yeah. with the mindset that it's going to be me and multiple wives. Correct. Because um, so like everybody in my family just calls me Ken Ken. So I always say my old girlfriend just wanted Ken Ken. She didn't want like who I was becoming and growing to become. So, yeah, I mean, I was dating her and she was part of my growth. And um, but it, she wasn't compatible. I think she wanted me to to be uh, who I used to be. So yeah, when that relationship ended- And, and, and I'm sorry tried, to interject. I'm sorry to interject here. Did, yeah, did, yeah, no, did yeah. you at least explain to her who you were becoming and what you were looking to do? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I explained. I explained. She wasn't okay. feeling it. Okay. Yeah, she wasn't feeling it. She didn't believe in it. And I let her hold me back because um, I was serious about my monogamous relationship. So at the time she told me, she wasn't interested and I just shut it down, but I had it in the back of my mind, but I totally left it alone. And so when I got out of that relationship, I said, I'm going to do what I feel. If she's really for me, she's going to hear me out and I need to be compatible, you know? And it was, it was a tough time because I also moved from St. Louis to Los Angeles with that queen as well, with the girl I was dating. So we had a serious relationship. We moved from our hometown together we moved to Los Angeles. We were trying to build a new life. I was still studying. I really got deep into meditating and stuff. And she just wasn't compatible, to be honest, because she was, um, you know, the type of person that liked to watch love and hip hop and everything else. And and she was kind of slowing me down and judging me. And I had this person in my household judging me when I'm trying to read or I'm trying to meditate. So I felt like I outgrew that relationship. And then I was just like, I can't go back. I need I need a queen that can keep up with what I'm where I'm going with how, how old were you at this time uh 19 20 so literally you're on because most people at 1920 they have no idea who they are they're still trying to figure it out um clearly you're on a mm -hmm. spiritual journey so you're trying to figure out who mm -hmm. you are but right this is a a, a hell of a life transformation um uh, Mm -hmm. and, and, and and very self-aware, if, if if I have to say it that way, to say, look, the, mm -hmm. the, the traditional relationship uh, that America has mm -hmm. bestowed upon us, one man, one woman, uh, it, it's not for me. W were you even surprised mm -hmm. that you were going down this path? And 
at any point did you say yeah. to yourself, what am I doing? Because this is very much counter everything that America yeah. teaches. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, that's why I kind of brought up the rapping thing because it was like I was going against the grain for so many years. I was fighting for this. So to me, it was just an extension of who I was becoming. I was already going against the grain on so many levels. Uh, back then at that time, people were calling me crazy. Uh, I was a conspiracy theorist for some of the same values and facts that I stand on to this day. I've seen the world kind of come up and I've seen people change their mind. People that judged me real hard a long time ago kind of swing around. I mean, there was even a time when I worked, I had a job and uh, I had got fired just for being black, basically. And this was such a different time in this day that I even told people I was going to sue the job for firing me because I was black. And people were looking at me like I was joking, like I had like it was a um, a goofy uh like I was dreaming and I had sued the job and I got my money. And so I was just going against the grain on so many levels at that time that I just was like, man, can't nobody tell me nothing. You know, I got to do what I feel. You know, the world's big enough. People are out here. And I felt like people were growing and we were all growing. So I just stayed firm. I was thinking about this the other night. I feel like it took a lot of confidence, you know, to step out on this limb mm, too. Sure. Um, and yeah, so I, I I stepped out and I really believed in myself and and I had a lot of people doubting me. And like you said, um, I also doubted myself sometimes. And that led me to meditate more because I was go, why are my own thoughts against me sometimes? Why am I battling? You know, and it was a that was a deep time for me. You know, I had I had been celibate for two years before I'd even met my first queen. I had totally stopped dating because it was like, what am I dating for? You know. And I just totally was like, man, I'm just going to do my own thing. I'm just, I'm not even going to think about dating. And then the girl that I first started dating was a friend first. So me and her were friends and we would just talk. And, and then she, she saw the vision. What's up guys. Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move, and I'll catch you all on the next video.